Hello, and welcome to a special Halloween edition of Fed Tax 101. Today, we're going to discuss the various types of business taxpayers subject to the federal tax system. Why does that matter? Well, for quite a few very important reasons that we're going to talk about. But the bottom line is that your business's classification for tax purposes is one of the very first pieces of information you need to know in thinking about how the tax code applies to it. This is true across pretty much the entire spectrum of a tax practice. Tax planners spend a lot of time making sure the business is structured in a way that minimizes the overall tax burden. The choice of entity can play a central role in this. Should the business be a corporation or a partnership? Should it be just one large company or should it be separated into one or more related but different businesses? And if so, should they be corporations, partnerships, a combination of the two, or something else? Should the business entity be entirely in the U.S., or should part of the business be organized in another country? Carefully selecting or changing the type of entity for your business can make a big difference in trying to minimize taxes, and a lot of people spend a lot of time thinking about this. Along the same lines, the structure of your business matters a great deal when it comes time to prepare the tax return. The business's structure determines the specific provisions of the tax code that apply in computing the business's taxable income for the year, the tax rate at which the company's income is taxed, the IRS tax form that must be prepared, the date on which the final tax return must be filed with the IRS, and a lot of other things affecting the ultimate purpose of the entire tax code, how you compute your taxes and file this year's tax return. Finally, your business's structure, as well as its size, affects how it interacts with the IRS after the tax return is filed. Currently, the IRS is structured into several stovepipe operating divisions. Each operating division oversees the tax compliance of specific segments of taxpayers, individuals, small businesses, large businesses, partnerships, tax-exempt entities, and so on. So the type of entity you choose for your business ultimately will affect which IRS examiner or IRS attorney sits across the table from you if the IRS examines the business's tax return. So that's why the type of entity you choose for your business is so very important. But what are the options? The simplest form of business taxpayer is an individual operating an unincorporated trader business as a sole proprietorship. The taxpayer attaches one or more separate schedules, such as Schedule C, to its own individual Form 1040, but otherwise treats the business's income and deductions as its own. The IRS sees you and your business as the same person. Even then, though, it's not always as easy as it sounds. For example, you have to be careful to distinguish between deductible expenses of the business and your own non-deductible personal expenses. How do you treat expenses of your home office? What do you do if you use your personal car for business purposes too? And things like that. So it's a simple business structure, but that doesn't mean the tax issues are simple. Next, your business can be organized as a corporation under the laws of a particular state. At that point, the business becomes a legal entity separate from the individual owners and generally will have its own separate tax obligations. The corporation will need to compute its own taxes using provisions of the tax code specifically applicable to corporations. Many of these corporation-specific rules are found in subchapter C of the tax code, which leads a lot of practitioners to refer to this type of taxpayer as a subchapter C corporation, or C corp. An important element of operating your business as a C corp is a double layer of income tax on the company's earnings. The corporation will be taxed on its business income when it files its corporate tax return. Then, when the corporation distributes some or all of those earnings to its owners as a dividend, 
those earnings generally will be taxed again on the owner's tax return. There are other things to consider if your corporation operates in more than one country, but let's put that aside for now. Procedurally, C-Corps are able to choose from more accounting methods than an individual can, such as an accrual method, and can even use a tax year other than the calendar year, as individuals are required to. They use specific tax forms different from those of individuals or partnerships. They pay tax at a different tax rate and are generally treated as a completely separate taxpayer if the IRS audits the tax returns. There are many other procedural considerations that come into play if you structure your business as a C-Corp. In certain situations, you might be able to elect to have the corporation's tax items pass through and be reflected directly on the tax return of its owners so that the corporation's income is only taxed once. Instead of structuring your business as a corporation, you might choose to operate it as a partnership. You might even accidentally create a partnership for tax purposes without meaning to if you operate your unincorporated business with someone else. Like a corporation, a partnership exists for tax purposes. Also like corporations, partnerships are subject to their own set of substantive and procedural tax requirements most of which are very different from the rules that apply to corporations and those that apply to individuals. One of the biggest differences is that even though the partnership files a tax return, the partnership itself does not actually pay tax. Its items of income and expense pass through to its owners, and the owners put those tax items directly onto their own tax returns. As a result, the business income is not taxed twice, as it is with corporations. So, in some ways, the partnership acts like a corporation, and in others, it acts like a sole proprietorship or a disregarded entity, although it obviously isn't. This is a gross simplification of an extremely complicated area, and we won't even attempt to scratch the surface of the partnership rules today. I just want you to be aware that if you or your client is operating an unincorporated business with someone else, you have to pay very close attention to the partnership rules to see if and how they apply. There are quite a few other types of taxpayers with their own specific rules as well, again with very different substantive and procedural rules that would apply depending upon which one applies to your business. The taxpayer might be an agricultural cooperative, a state law trust, a real estate investment trust, a REIT, a regulated investment company, or RIC, a non-taxable entity such as a charitable foundation, which has tax obligations even if it normally isn't required to pay taxes, an insurance company, a special purpose entity like a qualified settlement fund, a bank, and many other types of taxpayers with their own very specific rules and limitations layered on top of the foundational concepts we've been discussing in prior episodes. One final note before we wrap up. The federal government isn't the only one that taxes different types of taxpayers differently. A lot of states do as well. So you have to look carefully at the tax laws of the various states that might look to take a cut of your profits, weighing the pros and cons of how to structure the business. If you expect to do business internationally, the rules get even stickier and the tax planning can get even more intense. But the basic concept is the same. Non-tax considerations come into play too. How the business is structured affects more than just the tax return. It affects things like liability management and asset protection, especially if you're debating being a corporation versus a partnership, management structure, worker engagement, and a lot of other important business considerations that all have to be weighed at the same time. The so-called check-the-box regulations provide detailed rules regarding entity classification. Sometimes your business has no choice. Sometimes it does. Be sure to take a look at those regulations as your next step in exploring the types of business taxpayers for federal income tax purposes. Well, that's it for this episode of FedTax 101. Keep checking back for more. So long, everyone.